the next issue um, we also address in our in our uh, report in the booklet uh, intrastate access charges, but I'm going to skip that just in the interest of time um, and focus um, on two related issues, um, tariff filing and pricing flexibility. Now, most states um, have already established price caps um, which um, limit how much telecommunications carriers can charge for a service while uh, affording them the right to lower their costs if they choose. Um, what we need to move to is complete pricing freedom, which um, allows telecommunications carrier to raise their costs and allows them to lower their costs and allows them to do raise or lower costs selectively. Um, and the reason we need to do that is because the cost of providing service um, varies significantly based on population density. And right now, um, some customers pay a, a, a rate that does not fully recover the cost of providing the service to them. Others pay a rate that um, greatly exceeds the cost of providing a service to them. What this does is create magnets of competition for the profitable co customers. And um, competitors um, uh, can offer to provide service to the profitable customers and ignore everyone else. And when this happens, um, no one benefits. Um, the high cost customers not only are deprived of competitive choice, but ultimately they're deprived of the um, heavily subsidized service they need because the profitable customers um, do have competitive choices. They have wireless choices and voice over um, uh, uh, internet protocol services, which are vastly more efficient to begin with and um, are advantaged in terms of the rates that they pay to interconnect with the public switch telephone network. Um, so um, even the low cost customers, even the profitable customers, uh, you might think, well, they're getting a lower cost offering, lower cost choices. They have choices and some of those choices are lower cost so there should be no complaint there. But in fact, the high cost that the incumbent needs to charge in order to try to generate a subsidy um, to provide affordable service to its high cost customers acts as a pricing umbrella which enables the competitor, yes, to offer a slightly lower price, but not to have to offer a price that would be as low as it would have to be if there were full competition. So uh, we recommend for the benefit of all consumers, this system has to be changed. It has to be um, replaced with an explicit, transparent, competitively neutral funding mechanism um, into which all contributors um, contribute and out of which any provider utilizing any technology who wants to provide service in a high cost area can receive adequate support for doing so. So moving next to tariffs. Tariffs are the vehicle which um, uh, provide for the enforcement of these um, e equal and non-discriminatory rates uh, that, that we need to get rid of. Um, and a, a carrier files a tariff um, and, and uh, uh, provide a uh, um, outlines and details the terms and the prices that would be available to any, any customer and is um, not allowed to provide um, customized service offerings or to selectively um, reduce prices um, or ensure that um, all customers are paying a fully a comp compensatory price um, because um, the tariff um, requires that the um, provider has to average their prices across geographic areas. Um, now, in this instance, um, the FCC, of course, has de-tariffed, and that says that carriers are n neither required nor are they allowed to file tariffs. And um, telecommunications providers frequently um, aren't interested in going that far. Um, as long as a tariff can take effect immediately or on one day's notice, um, uh, that takes care of most of the competitive concerns, um, but, but not all of them. Tariffs still provide an enormous amount of detailed information um, that is made public for no valid business purpose um, and provides opportunities for collusion. When the airlines were deregulated, they were put on a similar, similar system. They were no longer required to file tariffs. What they were allowed to do was publish their own tariffs on their own websites. In some states, have followed that example. But a couple of years back, it was discovered by the Department of Justice brought a uh, lawsuit against six airlines because 
um, they actually communi communicated their intent to raise prices through the publication of tariffs on their own websites. And they would um, publish a tariff announcing their intent to create service or lower the price of a service in a particular city pair in advance and then wait and see what the reaction was. And if their competitors didn't file comparable tariffs, they'd withdraw the tariff before it took effect. And of course, telecommunications, I'm not aware of an instance where this has happened, but it could happen in telecommunications. Um, so the department, a consent decree was entered into in which the airlines agreed um, that they could only file tariffs uh, or publish tariffs on their websites for um, fares that were actually available. And um, I see my time is running out. Um, so maybe it's possible to um, come up with a tariff filing requirement which would um, uh, obviate any possibility of collusion among mar market participants, but more likely um, it's not. Um, also, um, exempt competitive services from utility com commission jurisdiction, as I mentioned, Ohio has already done this in the case of voice over internet protocol, but it's not clear in Ohio that um, wireless services are exempt from commission jurisdiction or broadband. Um, and again, this is necessary so uh, uh, investors and uh, companies can plan massive investments without the fear that um, there will be um, regulation down the road. To the extent that um, a state commission's jurisdiction is ambiguous, um, it really becomes a target for competitive rivals or for activists with an agenda, or even perhaps an incumbent who um, is struggling to keep up and is looking for protection. We don't need utility commissions um, as a result of entreaties from any of those um, parties uh, starting to consider, well, maybe we should do this, because that, in fact, does create um, significant uncertainty from an investment perspective. Um, also, carrier of last resort build out requirements and the requirements on cable companies to serve an entire franchise area. Senator Hirschman um, touched on this briefly. Um, here's one example of a problem. The carrier of last resort, a telephone company, um, let's say that a multi-tenant uh, residential development or shopping mall or business park. The developer um, signs an exclusive uh, partnership arrangement with a competitive service provider. And then one resident or tenant decides um, would rather get service from the incumbent. Under carrier or provider of last resort regulation, the incumbent has to build out facilities to that multi-tenant um, environment, even if it's just to serve one customer. And that can be very expensive. Um, it, it can create a situation where it can't possibly recover its cost. What we need to do, a couple things, is first of all, when there is competition, there's no necessity for a carrier or provider of last resort requirement. Um, when there isn't a, re a necessity, um, the carrier ought to be allowed to utilize any technology. If it's more economical to utilize um, some wireless or some VOIP, they should be allowed to do that. And um, Finally, any competitor should be allowed to um, voluntarily assume a carrier or provider of last resort obligation, and there ought to be explicit, transparent, and competitively neutral funding available to them for doing that. So I thank you very much for your patience and would be delighted to answer any questions.